This is Dr. Richard Schultz, Jr., um, demonstrating a DSEC case with a needle insertion technique over a sheet slide without folding the donor. You can see us at the beginning measuring the diameter of the cornea. If the cornea is over 11 millimeters in diameter, I prefer to use a 9 millimeter donor. Less than that, we use a 8.5 um, or 8 millimeter donor. We then mark the uh, host cornea with the appropriate size uh, marker to help us uh, guide our um, resection of decimase membrane. Here you can see we place the uh, donor cornea uh, epithelial side up on a trephination block, and I'm just drawing the uh, margin of the bed. And what I've uh, started doing recently is uh, marking the margin of the bed uh, on the uh, stromal side or epithelial side with gentian violet so when the uh, cornea is uh, inverted and placed on the trephination block um, I'll have these marks to guide uh, centration of the tree fine. I just use a manual handheld tree fine although of course you could use a vacuum uh, punch tree fine um, if you want. I also like to m measure the uh, diameter of the resection on the uh, donor tree find. This is a pre-cut tissue, by the way, from the uh, North Carolina Eye Bank. And I do like to measure the diameter to make certain that um, it's large enough to encompass the uh, uh, whatever size tree find I happen to be using. And then uh, I like to place an S on the stromal side of the donor. Uh, to help aid in orientation once the donor's in the anterior chamber. We then flip the uh, cornea over facing endothelial side up on the uh, trephination block and uh, you can see the uh, marks that we've made on the uh, stromal or epithelial side of the donor to help guide centration of the tree fine. Now the uh, camera on my microscope is not exactly coaxial with the oculars of the microscope but uh, so this looks almost off-center, but in fact the trephination is centered um, within the um, margin of the uh, uh, lamellar uh, dissection done at the eye bank. And uh, having tree find uh, the donor, we uh, irrigate with balanced salt and place a cover on the donor and turn our attention uh, again to the host. Um, in general, I like to make the incision on the uh, steep axis of the cornea because I'm using about a five millimeter incision now uh, and uh, hope to uh, flatten the uh, steep meridian whenever I can. Uh, I use either a clear corneal or a scleral tunnel incision. In this case, we're using a, uh, a clear corneal incision. And then I make a couple of side ports um, to aid um, in positioning the donor. Uh, one thing about these side ports is they're made with a fairly vertical entry to the cornea rather than parallel to the iris as you would uh, with cataract surgery. The vertical entry allows me to enter the anterior chamber with uh, other instruments without uh, dislodging the margin of the donor. You can see I've just instilled some uh, helon into the anterior chamber to keep it formed while we uh, strip decimates. And just to demonstrate to the other folks in the operating room, I've zoomed in on the endothelium to demonstrate the uh, fairly uh, significant guttata that you can uh, see here. Now, I prefer to um, strip the margin of uh, decimates um, through the uh, side ports with a, a reverse Sinsky and uh, I start here through the uh, side port uh, that's at about 7.30 this is a right eye and I'm uh, sitting at the 12 o'clock position while I operate and uh, what I do is just engage decimase 180 degrees away from the side port and uh, uh, just uh, with a little uh, general upward pressure against uh, decimase, try to inscribe a circle 
within the boundaries of the mark that we uh, made with uh, gentian violet towards the uh, beginning of the uh, case. And uh, so I do this in two passes for roughly 180 degrees uh, uh, for, for each pass to just inscribe uh, or score a decimase just inside the margin of this circle. I try to stay inside the margin because uh, uh, this will be covered by the donor. If I uncover a uh, decimase peripherally where it's not covered by the donor, uh, you can get um, stromal edema. Now, after scoring uh, a decimase membrane, um, in this case we make a, a, a 2.8 millimeter incision um, at about 12 o'clock with the uh, diamond keratome and uh, with these uh, desex procedures, rather than make a, a shelving incision, I try to make a shorter incision so the internal aspect of the wound doesn't interfere with the uh, margin of the graft. And um, after uh, making this incision, we use this little uh, scraping device to uh, engage the uh, margin of decimase where it's been scored uh, previously with the Sinsky and we just gently peel it back. Uh, some people prefer to use the Sinsky hook for this. I, I like to use this little scraper just because it has a little more surface area and uh, does a nice job peeling it. Um, and you can see uh, decimase starting to peel back here uh, on this little monitor. I'm not certain how good the resolution is. Um, but it's coming off uh, fairly nicely and uh, looks like it's almost freed up there we go. and uh, sometimes the whole thing will come out with the uh, scraper although in this case uh, I just reached in with uh, Kelman McPherson forceps to uh, pull out the uh, decimase and Typically, once it comes out, it's somewhat uh, folded up um, and the edges are, are torn. Uh, but I often like to just unfold it um, over the uh, cornea to see if there are any buttonholes or patches that I've left behind. One thing I'll mention that I did not do in that case, uh, and some people recommend doing, is after decimate has been removed, you can um, use a scraper, or uh, I often use an olive tip cannula to score the um, bed of uh, the host cornea within uh, the margin of your resec resected uh, uh, decimates, and this is thought to improve adhesion of the donor. Uh, in this case I decided not to do that, nor did I use any venting incision. I've, I've found that the venting incisions seem not to be necessary. Now having removed uh, decimates, I just use uh, the irrigation aspiration device to remove the remaining uh, viscoelastic and enlarge the uh, uh, wound now to um, about five millimeters with the uh, diamond keratome. Having enlarged the wound, um, in this case I'm using a, a sheets glide um, to place through the wound and into the anterior chamber. Uh, a number of folks have suggested that the uh, sheets glide may not be necessary and that you can do this uh, technique uh, without a glide. Um, I may give that a try in the future, but uh, most recently I've been uh, using the glide and once it's placed into the anterior chamber um, I irrigate the uh, red blood cells away from the wound and uh, place a mixture of uh, balanced salt solution and uh, helon over the uh, glide to uh, lubricate the passage of the endothelium um, Here's just a few drops of uh, Helon. 
uh, that I'm mixing with a balanced salt uh, right over the glide. Now, we then uh, use a uh, patent spatula to uh, deliver our corneal sandwich uh, to the eye. So right now we've got a disc with uh, two layers. That's the uh, stromal side on the bottom or epithelial side on the bottom and the endothelium is facing the uh, camera. You can see that the S we placed on the uh, stromal side of the donor is inverted and now we take our donor uh, endothelial disc and uh, peel it off of the sandwich and position it over the sheet's glide. Now in the past I was taught by Garrett Mellis to fold this into the taco, but I found that it's just easier to leave it unfolded. We elevate the uh, anterior lip of the incision, engage it with the uh, tip of the needle, and just slide it into the anterior chamber, and you can see that it's delivered into the eye unfolded. So, although you could argue that there's perhaps some trauma to the endothelium as it slides into the anterior chamber, I found that eliminating the intraocular gymnastics associated with unfolding the uh, donor in my hands at least is made to a faster uh, procedure um, with uh, uh, probably less trauma overall to the uh, endothelium. Now, uh, having uh, placed the uh, donor, um, we've uh, formed up the uh, anterior chamber and uh, I typically like to suture the wound uh, with uh, a uh, tenno vicryl. Uh, in this case, I've just used a little uh, X suture with a uh, buried knot, although, of course, you can do interrupted sutures. Or in some cases, uh, particularly if you have a self sealing scleral tunnel, uh, you can do these cases uh, without a suture. Uh, but here we, we did, in fact, suture the wound and uh, place a little X um, again with a buried knot. And once the uh, wound was uh, sutured, I like to place what I call a pilot bubble. Uh, now here I'm using a 30 gauge cannula through the side port incision to inject just a tiny bit of uh, air into the anterior chamber, um, making sure to place that air underneath the uh, donor and this allows the donor to float up against the uh, uh, host uh, stroma, but the bubble at this point is small enough so that I can easily uh, position the donor, and I'm just using the uh, end of a uh, cannula to gently stroke the uh, donor into place. Um, in this case, I thought I had it in position, but when I uh, formed the uh, chamber, I found that the uh, donor had a tendency uh, to uh, decenter nasally uh, a little bit more than I wanted. Uh, so what I did, and this is a, uh, a tip that I found helpful, is uh, I looked away from the scope and looked at the patient's head and noticed that the patient's head had rotated over just a little bit such that the uh, donor bubble wasn't really centered. Uh, so having made several attempts to stroke the donor into a uh, position. I uh, repositioned the patient's head uh, just a little bit such that the uh, donor would be pressing a little bit more centrally. And I just stroked the uh, donor into position with this uh, little pilot bubble. And you can see that we've got a, a pretty good overlap with the uh, margin of the donor uh, well centered over the pupil. and. Uh, Although you can inject your air bubble through the side port, I prefer to use a 30 gauge needle just posterior to the limbus and again underneath the donor for my complete fill because I find that with the 30 gauge needle there's uh, less leakage around the needle tract and I'm able to get more of a uh, firm uh, fill into the anterior chamber. I did start off years ago using an 8 minute air fill now I'm down to a uh, four minute uh, fill with the uh, bubble.